Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. In this section, we are going to talk about the temporal fossa, the infratemporal fossa and the muscles of mastication. So, this video is going to be very important for you all. So, let's start with temporal and infratemporal fossa. So, basically, muscles that are used while mastication are the part of this region. We'll talk about the temporal fossa first. Temporal fossa is a depressed area on each side of the skull in the temporal region. Here we can see this depression on the side of the skull. This depressed area is the temporal fossa. Okay. Now focus on this diagram. Here we have this line that is the superior temporal line. This one. Okay. And here we have the zygomatic arch. So this area basically is called the temporal fossa. It is present between the superior temporal line and the zygomatic arch. Let's talk about its boundaries. Anteriorly, it is bounded by these two bones that are the zygomatic and the frontal bone. So, this is the anterior boundary. And here we can see the frontal bone and the zygomatic bone. Okay. And posteriorly, it is bounded by the inferior temporal line and the supramastoid crest. So, this is the posterior boundary. And here we have the inferior temporal line and the supramastoid crest, which forms the posterior boundary. Superior to this fossa, we have the superior temporal line and inferiorly, it is bounded by the zygomatic arch. Its floor is made up of frontal bone, parietal bone, temporal bone and greater wing of sphenoid. So, temporal fossa is present above all these. Now, what are the contents of the temporal fossa? In temporal fossa, we have temporalis muscle, temporal fascia, deep temporal vessels, deep temporal nerves, auriculotemporal nerve and superficial temporal vessels. Now, what do you mean by infratemporal fossa? See, infra means below. So, obviously, it is below the temporal fossa. It is irregular space present below the zygomatic arch, right? So, to understand where infratemporal fossa is present, let's locate the zygomatic arch. Here, we have the zygomatic arch and just below this arch, we can see this irregular space this is what we call the infratemporal fossa. So, above this zygomatic arch, we have the temporal fossa and below it, we have the infratemporal fossa. Okay. Let's talk about the boundaries of the infratemporal fossa. Anteriorly, it is bounded by the anterior surface of maxilla. Its roof is made up of infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid. Medially, it is bounded by the lateral pterygoid plate and the pyramidal process of the palatine bone and laterally by the ramus of mandible. Now, its contents include tendon of temporalis muscle. This is the tendon of temporalis muscle, lateral and medial pterygoid muscles, mandibular nerve and its branches, corda tympani, otic ganglion, maxillary nerve with its branches, and posterior superior alveolar artery. Now, let's discuss the landmarks present on the lateral side of the head. So, we will discuss about what structures we can see on the lateral side. So, here we can see the zygomatic bone, head of the mandible, mastoid process, superior temporal line and terion. Let's jump on to our next topic that is the muscles of mastication. So, the purpose of muscles of mastication is to help the mandible to move in various direction during mastication and speech. So, we have various muscles of mastication. We have the masseter, temporalis, lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid. We'll discuss in detail about the movements of these muscles in the temporomandibular joint video. Let's start with masseter muscle first. If you see this muscle, it is quadrilateral in shape. So, if you see here in this diagram, this is our masseter muscle. Talking about its origin, we have three layers of master muscle. That is the superficial, middle and the deep layer. The origin of the superior one is from the anterior one-third of the zygomatic arch and from zygomatic process of maxilla. Deep layer of master muscle originates from the zygomatic arch and middle layer from one-third of zygomatic arch. Where do they insert? The superficial part insert in the lower part of the mandible. Deep part of the master is inserted in the ramus of mandible and the middle part is inserted in the central part of the ramus of mandible. Now, master muscle, as the name suggests, it is supplied by the mesetric nerve. What about its action? This muscle helps in elevation and retraction of mandible. Okay. 
So it elevates the mandible and it retracts, means pushes the mandible backward. For understanding its action, let's take one example that when we chew something, we open our mouth and the mandible goes downward, right? Try opening your mouth, you will see that the mandible is going downward. So this muscle, which is the master muscle, helps to get back to the original position by elevating the mandible upward. Now, next action is the retraction. Retraction means pulling back. So when the mandible is, you know, in its normal position or slightly ahead in its position, like in this image, it can be moved backward to the original position or a little more backward from the normal position. That is retraction. Next, we will discuss about the temporalis muscle. If you focus on its shape, it is a fan-shaped muscle. Not a ceiling fan, but a hand fan. Those fans which look something like this. Back in our 90s, probably. Talking about its origin, it originates from the temporal fossa and inserts into the deep surface of the coronite process and anterior border of the ramus of mandible. Its nerve supply is from the temporal branch of the mandibular nerve. What is the action? Its action is same as that of the master muscle, that is retraction and elevation of the mandible. So remember all the muscles of mandible, they elevate the mandible, that is they close the mandible except the lateral pterygoid muscle which opens the mandible or depresses the mandible. The next muscle is the lateral pterygoid muscle. And it has two heads, the upper head and the lower head. Okay, so from where does it originate? The upper head originates from the infratemporal surface and the crest of the greater wing of sphenoid. This is the crest of the greater wing of sphenoid, right? And the lower head originates from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. This is the lateral pterygoid plate here. And it has two surfaces. We have the medial surface. This medial surface is important for the next muscle we are going to talk about. That is the medial pterygoid muscle. And the lateral surface is here. So, the lower head of the lateral pterygoid plate originates from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. Where do these insert? Both heads, they converge and form a single tendon and they insert on the pterygoid fovea on the anterior surface of the neck of mandible. Here we have the pterygoid fovea and the insert on the pterygoid fovea and also on the adjoining articular disc and the capsule of the TMJ, okay? It inserts on the pterygoid fovea and also on the adjoining articular disc of the TMJ and the capsule of the TMJ, okay? What is the nerve supply? It is supplied by the anterior division of the mandibular nerve. Now, let's talk about its action. Its action is just opposite to the master and the temporalis muscle. This muscle depresses and protrudes the mandible. Depresses means opens the mouth. Protrudes the mandible means it will help the mandible to move forward. Okay. In the anterior direction. The next muscle we are going to talk about is the medial pterygoid muscle. The medial pterygoid muscle is large as compared to the lateral pterygoid muscle. So this is an image of the medial pterygoid muscle here. It's kind of a quadrilateral shape as you can see, right? And it also has two heads. But the heads here, they are named as the superficial head and the deep head. The superficial head originates from the tuberosity of maxilla. This is the tuberosity of maxilla. And the superficial head originates from the tuberosity of maxilla. The deep head originates from the medial surface of lateral pterygoid plate. Remember I talked about the lateral pterygoid plate and I told you that the medial surface is important for the medial pterygoid muscle. So medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate is the origin of the deep head of the medial pterygoid muscle. Where do these insert? These muscles insert on the medial surface of ramus of mandible posterior inferior to the mylohoid groove. Okay. And also on the inner aspect of the angle of mandible. Its nerve supply is by the medial pterygoid branch of the mandibular nerve. Its action is to protrude and elevate the mandible. Okay. Now clinical anatomy. You can palpate the temporalis and the master muscle by asking the patient to clench their teeth. And the medial and the lateral pterygoid can be tested by asking the patient to move the mandible from one side to the other. So these were the main muscles of mastication. We learnt about the temporalis muscle, the medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid and the masseter muscle, right? But apart from this, we also have some accessory muscles of mastication and that is the buccinator muscle. 
So let's talk about the buccinator now. The buccinator has three fibers, the upper fiber, middle fiber and the lower fiber. The upper fiber originates from the outer surface of the alveolar process of maxilla opposite the mandibular teeth. Okay. The middle fiber originates from the pterygo mandibular raphe and the lower fiber originates from the outer surface of the alveolar process of mandible opposite to the molar teeth. Where do these insert? The upper fiber will pass straight to the skin and the submucosa of the upper lip. The lower fiber will pass straight to the skin and submucosa of the lower lip and the middle fiber will desiccate and then pass to both the upper and the lower lips. Means they kind of merge and intertwine and they pass to both the upper and the lower lips. This muscle is supplied by the buccal branch of the facial nerve. What is the action? It flattens the cheek against the gum and the teeth. Okay. It also prevents accumulation of food in the mouth because this muscle has that capability of pushing the food outside the vestibule. It also helps in blowing of the trumpet or whistle. Okay. So this is about the accessory muscle of mastication that is the buccinator muscle. Now let's summarize. Temporal fossa is a depressed area on each side of the skull in the temporal region. Infratemporal fossa is an irregular space present below the zygomatic arch. We have total four muscles of mastication, which is the masseter, temporalis, lateral pterygoid and middle pterygoid. And we have accessory muscle of mastication, that is the buccinator. Okay. Now, important question from this topic include, describe the muscles of mastication in detail. Very important question, not even for UGs, but also for PGs. It can also be asked as enumerate the muscles of mastication, give origin, insertion, nerve supply and action of master muscle. So you have to remember the muscles of mastication very, very thoroughly. The third question can be a short note on temporalis muscle. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Keep revising. Take care. Alhafiz.